All right, and welcome back. In this video, we are going to be going through Chapter 6, Section 2, titled Inverses and Contrapositives. And by the end of this video, we should be able to state the contrapositive and inverse of an if-then statement, as well as understand the relationship between logically equivalent statements. So let's have out those guided notes. Let's begin. So let's think back. A conditional statement is often written as an if-then statement. The converse of a conditional is formed by interchanging the hypothesis and the conclusion. And two other related conditionals are what are called the inverse and the contrapositive. So let's say we have this given statement, if P, then Q. If today is Tuesday, then tomorrow is Wednesday. Makes sense. Great. Love that. The contrapositive happens when we interchange the hypothesis and the conclusion and then negate them both. So now it's if not Q, then not P. If tomorrow was not Wednesday, then today is not Tuesday. If we have a converse of our given statement, if Q, then P, well, that's if tomorrow is Wednesday, then today is Tuesday. And we have what's called the inverse can also be made. If not P, then not Q. So this goes back to our given statement, and we're just negating it. We're negating the hypothesis and the conclusion. So if today is not Tuesday, then tomorrow is not Wednesday. These are the four types of if-then statements that we're going to be seeing throughout the rest of the year. So the inverse, again, is formed by negating both the hypothesis and the conclusion of the original statement. The contrapositive is formed by negating both the hypothesis and the conclusion of the converse. So in example number one, we want to write the inverse of the conditional. If a quadrilateral is regular, then it's a square. And for B, we want to write the contrapositive of the conditional. If a triangle is equiangular, then it is not obtuse. So let's answer this. For A, if a quadrilateral is not regular, then it is not a square. Remember, the inverse, we're just negating the given. And for B, we have to first write the converse. Well, the converse, if a triangle is not obtuse, then it is equiangular. So now we write the contrapositive, which makes if a triangle is obtuse, and it is not equiangular. Notice that is obtuse is a negation of is not obtuse. And some other statements and their negations are P not Q turns into not P and Q. Is parallel is, this, is the opposite of is not parallel. An odd integer is the opposite of an even integer. Equal to is opposite of not equal to. Less than or equal to is opposite of greater than. So with all of this, please work on problems one through three on the guided notes and resume when you're ready to move forward. So a conditional and its contrapositive are either both true or both false. They are called logically equivalent statements. The converse and the inverse of a conditional are also logically equivalent. So for example number two, we want to classify the conditional as true or false, then give its converse inverse, and contrapositive, and classify each of these as true or false. So if two lines are parallel, then they do not intersect. So that's our given. Let's rearrange here. So is it true or false? It's true. If two lines are parallel, then they do not intersect. We know that to be true. So the converse is if two lines do not intersect, then they are parallel. That's false. Well, they don't intersect and they're parallel, we know we have skew lines, so it's going to be false. The inverse, if two lines are not parallel, then they intersect. Again, false. They could be skew lines. And lastly, the contrapositive. If two lines intersect, then they are not parallel. True. Again, notice here what is true and what is false, and notice the pairs of them. Our given and the contrapositive were both true. Our converse and the inverse were both false. This will happen all the time because they are logically equivalent. With this in mind, please work on problems four through seven on the guided notes and resume when you're ready to move forward. So for example number three, we have to assume the given conditional is true. And we're asked, what can you conclude by using the given statement together with each additional statement? If no conclusion is possible, we're going to say so. So our given, is if ABCD is a square, then its diagonals are congruent. And we're given four different statements that we're going to use with our given. So A, AC is greater than BD. B, AB is equal to BC, which is equal to CD, which is equal to AD. C, ABCD is a square. 
and D, AC is equal to BD. What we want to do is we want to identify our given and we want to use that for our original conditional and we want to look for a contrapositive because an original conditional as well as a contrapositive are logically equivalent. If we're able to find anything that is P, then we're going to be able to then justify then Q. If we're able to find anything that is then not Q, then we can say, well, then not P. That's what we're going to try to look for because, again, a conditional and a contrapositive are logically equivalent. If we have not P and not Q in a different order for a converse or an inverse, then we're not going to be able to form a conclusion. And that might sound a little bit confusing, but let's go through the answers here. So for A, we can conclude that ABCD is not a square. If AC is greater than BD, that means the diagonals are not congruent. So if the diagonals are not congruent, the negation of our conclusion, then we can say the negation of our hypothesis. Then ABCD is not a square. For B, it says AB is equal to BC, which is equal to CD, which is equal to AD. That is not in our given statement. There is nowhere in our statement that says AB is equal to BC, which is equal to CD, which is equal to AD. So we do not have a conclusion. Again, for B, we could have a rhombus because all sides of a rhombus are congruent. For C, we have AC is equal to BD because we know that ABCD is a square. That's given to us in part C. Well, ABCD being a square is if P. So if P, then Q. We can say its diagonals are congruent, or we can say AC is equal to BD because AC and BD are our diagonals. And lastly, we have AC is equal to BD. So we're saying, hey, if AC is equal to BD, then what? Well, we can't make a conclusion because all we know are the diagonals are congruent. We don't necessarily know it's a square. We could be looking at a rectangle, but we don't know it's a square. So essentially, when you see problems that look like this, you want to identify the conditional and a contrapositive and use those to conclude something in our final answer. If you are given parts of a converse or parts of an inverse, we're not going to be able to make any conclusions. So we want to say, okay, if P, then Q. If not Q, then not P. Those are what we're going to be looking for in that order. So again, for A, we had AC is greater than BD. So if our diagonals are not congruent, that's if not Q, then we say, okay, then ABCD is not a square, then not P. For C, we're given ABCD is a square. So if ABCD is a square, then Q. Then we can say AC is equal to BD because those are our diagonals. So these are a little bit tricky. So you have to really hone in and make sure you're focusing on each problem because they can stump you a little bit if you allow it. So again, look for that conditional, look for a contrapositive, and the inverse and the converse are going to be a no conclusion most of the time. With that in mind, please work on problems eight through nine on the guide and notes. Keep up the great work. Keep making yourself proud. Let us know if you have any questions. We'll talk to you soon.